Hi everyone and welcome back to Tennis Time. This week I'm continuing the series of the 20 greatest matches of all time after having that wonderful conversation with Gil Gross from Monday Match Analysis last week. I'm going back to the old routine. Um, so for number 15 I've picked yet another match taking place at the Australian Open. It's the 2017 Australian Open semi-final between Rafa Nadal and Grigor Dimitrov. In the previous version on number 16 I've uh, discussed the final from 2017 as well. Uh, that was Nadal against Federer, Federer winning. Um, and this match is the, the match preceding basically the final where Rafa Nadal has met Grigor Dimitrov in a classic thrilling Australian Open semi-final. So from a historic perspective, um, Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer, as I've said before, they were meeting in the final, both had a pretty bad 2016 considering the fact that uh, both had long-lasting injuries and they were forced to take longer breaks. Rafa Nadal, for instance, was a full start of the French Open. He was playing the tournament, uh, won the first and second round, but didn't compete starting from the third round. And he wasn't really playing until the Olympics. He played the Olympics, but uh, after that he had to take another long break. And Roger Federer was the one who uh, had a knee surgery after Wimbledon 2016, after he lost in the semi-finals against the Canadian Milos Raonic. So what was at stake at this point was yet another Roger Rafa semi, uh, sorry, Roger Rafa final at the Australian Open. Roger's won his semi before, the day before in five sets against Stan Wawrinka. And it was Rafa's turn to, to make it all the way to the final. None of them were really in the top seeds. Rafa was today the ninth seed. I was playing Grigor Dimitrov. Dimitrov was always the, the kind of person who you thought could make it and um, he had really good chances to be right up there with the top top boys and, and top players, top three, but he never really made it there. Um, so you never really knew what to expect of him. He was playing a very good tournament, he was playing well and many people were saying or feeling that his time has really come now and he might just be able to do it and, and reach his first major final. So the reason because I was talking so much about, about the potential of Federer and uh, Nadal final was that the last time they've played in a Grand Slam final in 2011. Six years have passed and uh, people were kind of writing this rivalry off a little bit that it will not happen so many times anymore and uh, they may not meet in major finals again or semis and it was really a big deal because this would have been the first time they played a semi-final uh, sorry they played the finals um, at a major event since 2011 where they've met at the uh, uh, French Open finally in 2011, the Rafa has won. So, if we look back at the semi final between Dimitrov and Rafa, a super long final. Four hours and 56 minutes. Really thrilling match in the sense that there's always a comparison made between um, Febres and, and uh, Dimitrov's game. They really do have a few similarities. Um, Dimitrov is sitting a similar backhand to, to Rogers, one-handed backhand and that backhand really needs to work well if he wants to have a chance against Rafa. Any one-handed player with a one-handed backhand player needs a good backhand day if they want to have a chance against Rafa's left-handed forehand and on this day that backhand was working well. When he was playing from a defensive position and slicing it, it worked well. When he was going over it, it also worked very well. So Rafa had his work cut out for him. He's won the first set and uh, 
it was one break that really decided the first set. In the second set, um, Dimitrov was the one to break first. Rafa came back, equaled it, went back on leverage terms and went back on serve. It looked like the set may go into a tie break, but at the critical junction, Dimitrov just managed to edge it out and he's taken the set. 7-5, uh, the third going into a tie break. Super competitive tennis all the way through. I mean, you never really knew if this match uh, was in a critical stage, it was the end of a set or it wasn't, because you had many, many super grueling competitive points where you, you really saw that neither player is really giving up so it was an incredible battle and this was continuing through the third and fourth sets both going into a tie break um rafa winning the third and dimitrov winning the fourth now in the fifth as dimitrov, dimitrov having won the fourth you had the impression that he might have a little bit of an edge and as they were going through serve in the first seven games of the match Dimitrov was serving first, there were no breaks, but uh, many times he had the impression that it was a little bit easier for Dimitrov to hold his service games and Rafa had to fend off break points. And uh, yeah, I said that in the first four games, there were, uh, sorry, in the first seven games there were no breaks, but actually in the first eight games there were no breaks because it was four all and uh, Dimitrov was serving to go 5-4 up, but this time Rafa was the one who made the break at the most crucial point. He's broken to 5-4 and, and held to serve out the match. Holding uh, to serve out the match was not easy. He was really fighting hard. Both players were incredibly resilient. So you had the impression that this match was going to go down to the fact who can wear the other player out because neither player really seemed to have the edge on the other. In the end, I really can't say what was the, the determining and deciding factor why Nadal has, has won uh, the final set. Maybe Nadal was just being Nadal as he usually is fighting so incredibly hard and never really giving up on himself, even though you had the impression that Dimitrov was the one who's having the upper hand. Um, somehow Rafa managed to save those break points in the most crucial, crucial times. And he just came through. I'm going to put down the, into the description below uh, the highlights and the entire match if you want to watch it. If you have quietly four and a half five hours time and you want to watch an incredibly great contest with super grueling rallies and fantastic determination what you can see from either player then this is really the match to watch in case you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed my recommendation please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and don't miss out on the next episode where I'm going to reveal the number 40 match on this list of the greatest matches of all time. Thanks for watching and have a good day.